What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that I haven't done on the channel in a while and that deck is Trickstar. Now Droll and Lockbird is one of the best hand traps in today's format and one of the best decks that can abuse Droll and Lockbird to its fullest potential is Trickstar. Now if you guys enjoy these deck profiles make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel but we don't just do deck profiles we do combo videos dual replays, a ton of shorts here on the channel. So you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's deck profile. I'm really excited to be showing off Trickstar. And this is a deck that I think when built and played properly can be pretty competitive in today's format. So with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so to start things off, we are playing three Trickstar Candina, of course, the best normal summon of your deck. You definitely wanna be maxing out on Candina. Candina is really important because essentially she's gonna be able to help you get your reincarnation lock going, help you get into your light stage and whatnot. So Candina is very important. Same thing with three liquors i actually like playing three liquors i know a lot of people cut this card down to two but i actually am still a big fan of playing three liquors and the reason for that is essentially this card can help you dodge a lot of hand traps with your candina veiler and imperm are running around right now veiler because super heavy samurai is playing it and then imperm a lot of other decks are playing it as well right now so for that reason liquors is really good just to help the candina dodge a lot of hand traps and on top of that this does help you do a lot of the burn damage and when this deck does go into time or if you do go into time having extra liquorices can be very powerful as well so so that's why we're playing the three Licorice. Lastly, we're playing one Lily Bell and one Coral Bane. That's it for the Trickstar monsters. I think these are the only Trickstar monsters you actually need to be playing. This is the most consistent lineup, in my opinion. Coral Bane is just a one-up. I don't think you need more than this. It's just an extra name that you can summon on your side of the field. Try to get your Link plays up. But other than that, these are the main ones that you're going to need. And then for the other Trickstar cards, we're just going to do all the Trickstar cards together. We're playing three Trickstar Light Sage. Light Sage, of course, is back at three now. And this card is absolutely insane. Not only does it help you lock up your opponent's back row, it gets gets you a search which is really powerful as well and you got to be playing through this this is mandatory three of we're also playing the one terraforming the reason we're playing this even though candina can technically search this is because you'd rather not search your light stage you'd rather search especially because you want to go first your reincarnation droll lock because if you're able to get to reincarnation and you have a droll live then it's absolutely powerful right it's insane in that sense so that's why you want to be playing the terraforming with your light stages and lastly of course we're playing three trick star reincarnation reincarnation is obviously one of your win conditions in this deck one of the most broken win conditions in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I feel like it's not getting abused enough in today's format. I think Trickstar is still one of those decks that can abuse this lock. And it's just so easily searchable, which is really nice as well. So this is it for your Trickstar cards. I don't think you need any more in the Trickstar lineup. I think this Trickstar lineup is very powerful. It helps you really kind of snowball. And the reason this deck does so well, in my opinion, is because, yes, you're not making a huge turn one board. But you make a turn one board with Reincarnation. Maybe a Liquor is doing some burn damage. Maybe some hand traps that you guys are going to see later. And then turn two, turn three turn four you guys are going to see this deck how it snowballs and it can be very powerful so for that reason i really like this lineup for trickstar cards i wouldn't change it up at all Next, we're playing three Kashtara Fenrir. I still think playing three Kashtara Fenrir is really important in a deck like this one. This being able to put itself onto your side of the field going first, getting you that extra form of disruption is really, really powerful. Also, because the Trickstar monsters aren't too big on their own, this card can help you in the battle phase get rid of a lot of bigger monsters because it in itself is 24. But of course, we all know when it attacks, you can target a monster on the field and banish it. So for that reason, Fenrir is very powerful. And I still think that maxing out on the Fenrir is really important in this deck just because it does help you in that battle phase a little bit more. More. So three cost surf and rear, I think it's pretty mandatory in a deck like this one. Next, I'm playing a Dogmatica package. So I'm playing one Ecclesia, one Fleur de Lis, three Nadir Servant, and two Punishment. So I actually want to talk about this engine and the reason why I think this engine is so powerful. So I think this engine provides a lot to this deck. One of the main things it provides is other forms of disruption that this deck otherwise didn't have. Fleur de Lis is a very powerful interruption on its own. It's a negate, which is really nice. And then you have Punishment, which is really good because Punishment, in addition to any of your extra deck monsters that you're sending, something like Entis can get you an extra pop, something like like Garuru can get you a draw. So punishment is very, very powerful and it's another form of disruption this deck is gonna have. So keep in mind, there's so many different forms of like small disruption. It's not like putting up seven, eight negates, but this deck does a really good thing where it's kind of like, hey, we have a pop here, we have a negate here, we have a banish here, right? We have some burn damage, etc., etc. So it's kind of one of those things where this deck does that really well, where it's like your opponent has to focus around multiple different ways of disruption, multiple different forms of disruption. It's not like, oh, let me see if I can out the one monster negate. And the real cool thing about the Ecclesia over here is she's a level four that synergizes pretty well because it helps you.
to get into your extra deck. On top of that, Nadir Servant can add your Ecclesia back from your graveyard. So that's the only reason we play one. And I think this ratio is just enough on its own. I think you need to be playing these ratios. Three Nadir, yes, you have to be maxing out on this just because this card in itself is just so powerful getting you into Ecclesia and then starting up all your plays over here is really nice. So yeah, I really like this lineup. I think it's a very consistent lineup. Next up are the hand traps, and we're playing a ton of hand traps. We're playing three Ash Blossom, three Ghost Ogre, three Droll and Lockbird, as well as three Imperm. So we're actually playing a full 12 hand traps in this deck, and I think it's pretty mandatory. So Droll and Lockbird, honestly, is just such a broken card in today's format generally. But of course, with the Reincarnation Lock, uh, we all know the how powerful this card is. It's just kind of self-explanatory, in my opinion, because yes, this card obviously is just really good into Super Heavy, really good into Kashta, really good into a lot of decks. But then again, on top of that, it's like oh if i'm also comboing it with reincarnation this is a win condition for me so you got to be playing these three in my opinion but then for the other hand traps here i just think these are the best hand traps in today's format ash blossom ghost ogre are very very powerful imperm of course really good going first and really good going second being able to break boards with this or just bait out negates with this so for that reason i think this is the best hand trap lineup that you can be playing in this deck you don't want to be playing nibiru because the token can sometimes be really big for you and like you don't play a lot of big monsters even fenrir like at 2400 sometimes isn't big enough for the token so so for that reason, I'm not playing Nib. Uh, you guys can play Kaijus. I'm going to be showing you guys a side deck. In the side deck, you definitely play Kaijus. But I think this hand trap lineup is the best lineup you can be playing in this deck. To round off the main deck, we're playing one Called by the Grave, of course, as well as three Prosperity, so that you can get through your deck a little bit faster. So this is just consistency over here, and this is just to protect you a little bit from other hand traps. This deck is 41 cards in the main deck. The extra deck really just consists of a lot of toolbox cards that you guys can be playing. So Exoton Knight is one of those. Exoton is a very powerful card, of course, helping you break boards. Baguska as well as Dweller are really good going first, so you guys can play these. But again, like this Dweller could be, you know, Tornado Dragon, could be any other rank 4 monster. This is just essentially just toolbox. And then we're playing two Zeus, of course. You have to be playing two right now just because of Kashtara. Obviously, post ban list. This is built to be post Sayak, but post ban list, you never know if Kosh gets hit a decent amount. Maybe this won't need to be at two anymore. But right now, I think you need to be playing two also for that reason we're playing two garura and two entis i think this is pretty important because you're going to send them off of your nadir servant off of your punishment and whatnot punishment sending entis is a pop two and then like sending garura is a draw one so i think you definitely need to be playing two and two these are the best like punishment targets and the best nadir targets that you guys can be playing and then we're playing some link monsters to help you push for a lot of damage and you know link climb we're playing the one nightmare phoenix the one lina is really good because all your monsters are light so this card can be really powerful then we're playing the ip masquerade the unicorn selena is really good because your dogmatica ecclesia is a spellcaster so for that reason sometimes you guys can go into selene and then selene and unicorn can help you go into access code to try to push for games so this extra deck here i think it's pretty standard there's nothing too special in the extra deck i would just definitely recommend playing these for your targets for punishment and the dear servant Lastly, I want to show you guys a side deck over here. And this side deck, of course, can be built differently based off of your locals. Side decks, especially something like this one, is just a mock uh, side deck that I'm just showing you guys a kind of skeleton that you guys can be playing. So we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster as well as the three Lightning Storm. These are really good board breakers that you guys can be playing. You guys saw in the main deck, we're playing a lot of hand traps, but we're not playing a lot of board breakers. So these cards are really good. Obviously, clearing back row, which is really, really nice. Lightning Storm clearing front row is a thing as well. So you guys need to be playing these, in my opinion. And then I'm playing mind control as well as one change of heart these are really good because you can just take your opponent's monsters link climb with them get them off the field which is really nice so again these are kind of board breaker s cards and lastly speaking of board breakers we are playing three of the gamma seal gamma seal being able to tribute over purely tribute over any of the super heavy samurai board which is really powerful as well so i do like the three gamma seal i think this is pretty important as well so you guys can see we are playing a ton of board breakers because the main deck it has a lot of hand traps but there are some decks that some of the hand traps aren't amazing into so for that reason playing the board breakers can sometimes be better and then this card over here is another hand trap 3d shifter shift is a card that this deck can play without any issues because in your turn one you're not link climbing a ton you're not sending a ton of stuff to the graveyard so for that reason it can be pretty good to be siding in your shifter especially games two and games three into decks that on honestly just folded to shifter and the really cool thing about shifter is really good siding going second but it's also really good siding going first because if you side this going first against some decks you can just start your turn off by activating shifter then doing all the things that you guys want to do because shifter is really powerful now keep in mind with shifter cards like nadir servant and punishment i believe have to send to the graveyard so it does turn off punishment does turn off nadirs but again sometimes the payoff is just way better when you're activating a shifter and your opponent can't play at all right so that's why i'm playing the three shifter and lastly for going first we're playing the three dimensional barrier obviously barrier is really powerful into branded it's powerful into mana dome now it's been powerful into purely it's even powerful into kashtar calling ixies can be very powerful as well right so for that reason i think this side deck over here again it's not like the most perfect side deck in terms of like each 
person's locals is different. So I think if I was going to my locals, this side deck would be really good because my locals has a little bit of everything. There's a lot of stun decks in my locals. You have combo decks, you have meta. Some people's locals are really focused towards one deck or another, right? So for that reason, you always build your side deck how you think it should be built for your locals. But I think if you want to just cover a little bit of everything, this is a really good side deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now that was my take on Trickstar post Syac format. And I think it can be very competitive just because it can play so many hand traps. And then also just abuse the best hand traps of today's format. You have the Dogmatica cards, which is going to provide you different forms of disruption as well as the Kosh or Fenrir's. So I think this deck has so many different layers to it, which I think is going to be hard for your opponents to counter. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we don't just do deck profiles combo videos do replays product openings and a ton of shorts so you guys are going to get a little bit of everything on this channel make sure you guys subscribe we're on the road to 10,000. i appreciate every single one of you thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace